With GPUs being difficult to buy and honestly the price of everything going up, right now it's a pretty difficult time to build a budget gaming PC under $500. One of the best ways to get a remotely fair price on a GPU is to buy used, but maybe you don't want to do that. Pre-builds are certainly an option, especially from Jawa, but maybe you don't want to pay an upcharge fee and rather do it yourself. Today I'm going to show you how to build the absolute cheapest possible brand new gaming PC and I actually got every part right on Amazon Prime. Everything arrived to my house in one or two day shipping and although the convenience factor is definitely here on this one, that doesn't necessarily mean I recommend you doing it this way, but you can if you want. We'll talk about all the pros and cons of a super cheap brand new parts build like this. I have a condensed down PC building only version of the live stream so you can see exactly how I put it together. We're gonna benchmark the heck out of it so you know precisely the level of performance you can expect and it's actually not all that bad. And there's even a cheat sheet linked down in the description full of alternative parts, the cable management guide, bio settings, and so much more. Before moving on, the sponsor of today's video is War Thunder, which is an absolute huge free-to-play military action game where tanks, planes, and ships all collide in the most chaotic way possible. One second there's a jet buzzing overhead, next a tank fires a shell at an enemy hiding in an ambush, and then suddenly that safe spot isn't looking so safe anymore so you can't even relax. In War Thunder, it's all about combining air, sea, and land combat in massive multiplayer battles with vehicles from the 20th and 21st century. Players can conduct air battles on jet planes, move around cities on armored tanks, cover ground vehicles on helicopters, or command warships at sea locations in intense battles on huge maps created in the style of the real world. Everything looks incredible. Vehicles show realistic damage, they can be customized down to the tiniest details, and there's impressive realistic physics. The newest update, Hornet Sting, adds legendary vehicles like the FA-18 and SU-30 and gives naval battles a serious upgrade with new mechanics, new effects, and way more explosions. The game's free to play on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox, just click the link down in the description or in the pinned comment to get signed up. New players and anyone that hasn't logged in for six months get bonuses like a 100,000 silver lions, a special eagle of valor decorator, and more. And don't sleep on War Thunder Mobile either, it's out now on iOS and Android, some military madness just scaled down to fit in your pocket. Alright, so starting with the CPU, we're going with the 4 core and 8 threaded Ryzen 3 4100. I know, 4 cores and Ryzen 3 just doesn't sound that good in 2025 anymore but with a brand new parts build for as cheap as possible, this is realistically your best possible option. It also comes with a cooler for some additional value, which we're definitely taking advantage of. Now, sure, I bet you can find some Intel Celerons or model names that I don't even know about these days. But if you want the cheapest option that still gives you a decent gaming experience, this is probably your best bet. The good thing is that it gets us on the AM4 socket, which as we know is very upgradable. And speaking of which, the motherboard to do that is this Gigabyte A520M KV2. Now, I don't necessarily think you should get this specific board if you have plans to actually upgrade to like a 5700X3D or anything. One of the many sacrifices we have to make for a gaming PC like this is upgradability, and this motherboard is definitely an example. For a 4100, it'll work perfectly fine, but with two RAM slots, minimal IO and ports, and absolutely no bells and whistles, it's not a choice that I'd usually make, but if you're trying to put together a PC like this, it's most likely the cheapest option. Honestly, the way I found it was by going to PC Part Picker, selecting AM4, sorting by the cheapest price and buying literally the top option. For RAM, I did the same exact concept because as you can see, this isn't the most aesthetic kit available and not even the best performance. It's a silicone power 2x8 gigabyte DDR4 kit, which is clocked at a respectable 3200 megahertz, but only has a CL rating of 22. CL 22 isn't the end of the world, but typically I'd aim for CL 16 on DDR4, but again, it's the cheapest option available. I hope by now I don't have to keep giving the disclaimer over and over that this is the cheapest possible option. That's the entire purpose purpose of today's video. And also everything I am talking about is linked down in the description along with that cheat sheet that even includes alternative part links if you're interested. All right, so next up we have the SSD and we aren't even going up to a one terabyte model today. This is the Team Group MP33 512 gigabyte NVMe and I do actually like the model though. But if you want to hold more than a handful of games, obviously I recommend one terabyte or possibly even two. After that we have the power supply and this model isn't so bad either. It's the Apivia Prestige 600 watt and for $51 it's actually very consistent 
and reliable value on Amazon. Despite the Apivia brand, which isn't the most reputable in the power supply market, this specific model is rated tier C on the new and improved tier list, which is what we really care about. And if you don't already know, if you go to zttbuildhelp.com, there's a new PSU tier list in town. This has all the updated models, including the ATX 3.0 and 3.1 stuff, and even tiering criteria so you can see exactly what separates a good power supply from a bad one. For a sub $500 new parts build, a tier C unit is perfectly fine in my opinion. What's also perfectly fine is this Okinos Aqua 3 Air. And honestly, even if this wasn't a cheapest possible option build, I'd still consider it. Okinos has been on fire this past year with the budget case models, and this one follows suit. For less than 60 bucks, we're getting an updated all glass fish tank design. There's also a USB-C connector on here, which our budget motherboard can't take advantage of unless if we put an adapter in there. But the best part is that it comes included with these three black 120 mil fans, so it makes it super easy to build inside of. You'll notice that all three fans in here are set to the exhaust position. That creates a negative airflow setup where instead of having fans directly controlling the intake, fresh air is basically pulled through any possible hole in the case and then completely flushed out the top and the back. We've used this case a handful of times already and have never had temperature issues, provided we are typically putting in budget, not super power hungry hardware. We'll see soon in the benchmarking section exactly what those temps look like, but spoiler alert, they're perfectly fine. And finally, the last component to throw in here is the graphics card, and many of you probably already know what I had to go with. This is the MSI Ventus 2X RTX 3050, and even worse is that it's the six gigabyte model, not the eight. If you've been watching my content for a while, you'll know that I'm not a big fan of this GPU, but for a build like this, it does actually work. These are usually priced around the $180 mark, and at that price, it's the cheapest brand new option. Well, provided you don't consider the recycled RX 580 as brand new. It doesn't really matter which brand or manufacturer you buy, since they're all very similar in performance and cooling, but no matter which model you buy, here is where we are losing the most amount of value in this build. For less than 200 bucks, if you were to shop on the used market like Jawa or eBay, you could find much better options. The RX 5700 XT is only about 150, but performs significantly better like a 3060. Used RX 6600 XTs and 6650 XTs would be much better. And even if you wanted to stick with Nvidia, you could find a used RTX 2070 for this price as well. The six gigabyte version of the 3050 performs worse than the eight gigabyte as you would expect. But again, if you wanna build an all new parts build under $500, this is one of the very few reasons why this GPU exists. And just as a disclaimer, I have heard a lot from you guys that across the world, the RTX 3050 pricing does make a lot of sense compared to everything else. My hate towards this card has only ever been based on the pricing I have here in the United States, but the physical card itself still gets the job done for an ultra budget GPU as we're about to see in the benchmarks. Before that though, let's take a quick look at the full parts list. And as you can see, this totaled up to about $475, which I'm not gonna lie is pretty impressive for 2025. Even during the supply issues, tariffs, inflations, and everything else working against us, if you desperately wanna build a brand new parts gaming PC under 500, it's still definitely possible. But again, if you copied this entire parts list, but swapped out the GPU, you would get much better value. And as a final reminder, if you are going to copy this and you wanna see the step-by-step -step PC building video, that's linked down in the description. But now let's jump into the fun part, which are the benchmarks. And I have a feeling some of you may be surprised by this. We'll start with the good numbers in games like Apex Legends, because in 1080p with medium settings, we got a very respectable 142 average FPS. Fortnite also looked good in 1080p pro settings with this 114 average FPS. And Valorant, of course, as well, because that Ryzen 3 4100 enables us to put up a 135 average FPS in 1080p with medium settings. If you wanted to pair this $475 new parts build with a 1080p higher refresh rate monitor, you definitely could take advantage of it with these easier to run titles. But if you're gonna play a game that's remotely demanding these days, then you are gonna be mostly playing in that 60 to 75 FPS mark, which is still pretty good. Here's Marvel Rivals and in 1080p low settings, we still got 72 FPS. And here's Cyberpunk at 1080p low getting just over 70 FPS as well. Now to keep things transparent, not every game ran that well. For the new Monster Hunter Wilds, we only got 35 FPS with 1080p and the lowest setting. And with Starfield in 1080p low with DLSS set to ultra performance, we still didn't clear 60 FPS. This PC will still provide above 60 FPS gameplay in almost every title in 1080p, but unfortunately not the super demanding or unoptimized brand new titles. If you wanna see our full dedicated benchmarking run video for this PC with longer gameplay clips and much more titles, that's up on the screen right now and linked down in the description. I also wanna quickly highlight some temperature testing real quickly because we are using that negative airflow setup with the Okinos Aqua 3 Air case. Here you can see in Delta Force where the RTX 3050 is being blasted to 100% the entire time, it was still in the 61 to 62 degree mark. Here's GTA 5 where both the CPU and GPU are usually above 70% and 
and both of them have very cool temperatures. Overall, this honestly isn't a terrible way to build a $500 brand new build, specifically if you want to use brand new parts. But my preference for this price range would be to copy this build that's on the screen right now.